Thank you very much, everybody. Before we begin, I'd like to congratulate all of those incredible people that have worked for so long on our endless war in Afghanistan, 19 years, going on 20 years. And there hasn't been a moment like this. We've had uh, very successful negotiations. We think they'll be successful in the end. The other side's tired of war. Everybody's tired of war. That's been a particularly long and gruesome one. And I want to congratulate President Ghani and the people of Afghanistan. I want to remember all of the people, all of the great, great men and women that have lost their lives in the war and to their parents and wives and husbands and families, brothers and sisters. Uh, it's a great, great people. Many lives over such a long period of time have been lost. I want to thank our wounded warriors, people that are still bearing pain and all of the problems that they've had to go through. And, they're incredible people, incredible spirit. I'd go to Walter Reed and see them so often, and the spirit they had, they wanted to go back. Despite their wounds, they always said, I want to go back. Uh, wounded warriors, they're incredible people. I guess most of all, I want to thank all of the people in the United States for uh, having spent so much in terms of blood, in terms of treasure and Treasury, uh, the money that has been spent, the lives that have been lost. And we just signed an agreement that puts us in a position to get it done, bring us down to in the vicinity of 8,000 troops. The United Nations was uh, informed of everything. And NATO has been uh, great. Secretary Stoltenberg has been fantastic. And I want to thank uh, the United Nations for the help they gave. And I also want to thank and congratulate Secretary Stoltenberg of NATO. 29 countries involved and all approving, all very happy with what's going on. I want to also thank and congratulate Secretary of State Pompeo and Secretary of Defense Mark Esper. And I'll be meeting personally with Taliban leaders in the not-too-distant future. And we'll be very much hoping that they will be doing what they say they're going to be doing. They will be killing terrorists. They will be killing some very bad people. They will keep that fight going. We've had tremendous success in Afghanistan in the killing of terrorists, but it's time, after all these years, to go and to bring our people back home. We want to bring our people back home. And uh, again, it's been it's been a long journey in Afghanistan, in particular. It's been a very long journey. It's been a it's been a hard journey for everybody. We're very largely a law enforcement group, and that's not what our soldiers are all about. They're fighters. They're the greatest fighters in the world. As you know, we've destroyed in Syria and Iraq 100 percent of the ISIS caliphate, 100 percent. We have thousands of prisoners. We've killed ISIS fighters by the thousands and likewise in Afghanistan. But now it's time for somebody else to do that work, and that'll be the Taliban. And it could be surrounding countries. There are many countries that surround Afghanistan that can help. We're 8,000 miles away. So we'll be bringing it down to 8,000 to approximately 8,600 in that vicinity. And then we'll make our final decision uh, some point in the fairly near future. But this was a uh, very uh, spirited 
agreement. There was a lot of uh, there was a lot of talk. There was a lot of everything. They've been trying to get this for many years, and just it's time. So I just want to thank everybody. I want to congratulate everybody. Uh, I really believe the Taliban wants to do something to show that we're not all wasting time. If bad things happen, we'll go back. I let the people know we'll go back, and we'll go back so fast, and we'll go back with a force like nobody's ever seen. And I don't think that will be necessary. I hope it's not necessary. And uh, so I just wanted to bring that up before we begin on a topic that has become very, very important to everybody. First of all, the amount of work that these professionals behind me and many other professionals in many rooms behind us who are watching right now I don't have the room here to bring them all in, but they have been working round the clock so hard on the coronavirus. Uh, it's a uh, it's a tough one, but a lot of progress has been made. I want to provide an update to our people, to our citizens, to the world, frankly, on our action to address the corona virus and those that have been uh, hurt badly by it. At this moment, we have 22 patients in the United States currently that have coronavirus. Unfortunately, one person passed away overnight. She was a wonderful woman, a medically high-risk patient in her late 50s. Uh, four others are very ill. Thankfully, 15 are either recovered fully or they're well on their way to recovery. And in all cases, they've been let go in their home. Additional cases in the United States are likely, but healthy individuals should be able to fully recover. And we think that will be a statement that we can make with great surety now that we've gotten familiar with this problem. They should be able to recover should they contract the virus. So healthy people, if you're healthy, uh, you will probably uh, go through a process and, and you'll be fine. Since the early stages of the foreign outbreak, my administration has taken the most aggressive action in modern history to confront the spread of this disease. We move very early. That was one of the decisions we made uh, that really turned out to be a, a, a lifesaver, in a sense, big lifesaver. Uh, on January 31st, I imposed travel restrictions on foreign nations who had — and anybody that had been to China or people coming out of China. And I want to say that China seems to be making tremendous progress. Uh, their numbers are way down. And uh, if you read, Tim Cook of Apple said that uh, they're now in full operation again in China. Their numbers are way down. Experts now agree that the decision to move so quickly, despite a lot of opposition on that decision, was uh, a wise one. It greatly slowed the spread of the virus to the United States. And it really uh, gave us time to do some of the critical moves that we've done. And it allowed these great professionals to get together and figure it all out. And we think they've done that. Uh, we've taken the most aggressive uh, actions to confront the coronavirus. And they are the most aggressive taken by any country. And we're the number one travel destination anywhere in the world, yet we have far fewer cases of the disease than even countries with much less travel or a much smaller population. As an important part of our efforts, on Monday, I'll be meeting with the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world, actually. They'll be coming to the White House, and we're talking about a vaccine and developing very quickly, and they've already started working on it, developing very rapidly a vaccine for the virus, to combat the virus. And we're having very good initial 
uh, feedback. But the, these companies will be coming to the White House on, on Monday. Uh, tremendous amounts of supplies uh, are already on hand. We have 43 million masks, which is far more than anyone would have assumed we could have had so quickly. And a lot more are coming. Today, the White House Coronavirus Task Force, led by Vice President Mike Pence, uh, they met for two and a half hours. I spent a lot of uh, that time with them also. And we came up with some uh, ideas, recommendations, and, frankly, some pretty strict edicts that we're going to be going by, and Mike's going to be discussing that. Uh, but we are really having a group of people that is so talented, and they're working round the clock. And for that reason, I really would wish that uh, we could really — that we could report uh, exactly what's happened, how — how well we're doing under quite adverse circumstances, uh, but we're doing really well, very, very professionally handled. Our country is prepared for any circumstance. We hope it's not going to be a major circumstance. It'll be a smaller circumstance. But whatever the circumstance is, we're prepared. And I'd like to just ask and uh, caution that the media — we would respectfully ask the media and politicians and everybody else involved not do anything to incite a panic, because there's no reason to panic at all. Uh, this is something that is being handled professionally. I also want to thank, by the way, uh, governors and representatives of our various states, in some cases uh, some more than others, because they've really been working very hard uh, in areas where we've seen indication of the virus. But I want to thank the governors and all of the representatives from all of our states. Uh, the the rooms they've made available, the speed with which they've worked has really been incredible. So, uh, again, thank you to everybody.